random junk from the archives. I don't know if we have uh, Matt Zimmerman. Can you hear me okay, Matt? I can. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly now, thanks. Your, your thoughts today? Well, I mean, it's, just, it, it's, like, it's like the end of an era. He was, uh, as far as science fiction, as puppetry and supermarionation, he was the, he was the icon for it. And, uh, and I was pleased that we, we were together about five months ago for the, you know, for, for a signing, and we got to chat and have dinner again you know, after all the, you know. And so it's, I, I admired him very much. He was, he was just one of those people, you know, and he, I can remember him coming to me as a young man when we did finish the series of Thunderbirds, and he said to me, Matt, this will be your pension, and I, I <laughs> laughed. But he was right. He was right. It, it's lasted all these years, and it, it will go on for a long time because it, it was a terrific series that he produced. Give me a sense of what it's like being that, that voice. I mean, when you walk into a restaurant or people hear you on the phone, do they immediately associate that with Thunderbirds? Do they recognize you? It doesn't ha happen all the time. It has to be, it's usually a, 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 a man in his 30s or 40s. So when I say something, he'll suddenly say, oh my God, <laughs> you're the voice of Alan Tracy. And then, mm. they, then they go absolutely berserk because they, it, it's a big part of young, it's on young people's lives, you know. It's, well, it's a part of mine, and it certainly is a part of theirs. It, it brought them such enjoyment. They always speak with this, uh, of this series with such affection, mm. you know, and I held Jerry in that kind of affection as well. And, you know, I was, I'm very pleased to have known him, and I feel very sorry for Jamie and his wife Mary at the moment because, you know, it must be going through a terrible time to happen so quickly. That affection uh, really comes through from those we've spoken to this afternoon and also a sense that he was a man genuinely interested and uh, not just in the fiction but in the science as well, uh, the, the sense of creativity that he put into oh, his work. I mean, when you, if you look at Thunderbirds, uh, those puppets were doing things in Thunderbirds in, in the 1960s that we're only just doing now. I mean, we had mobile phones. I mean, I read in the paper the other day, somebody's invented a hover bike. Well, uh -huh. we had hover bikes, and uh, Alan was driving one in the, in the thing with the alligator, with the crocodiles. He was driving a hover bike, and now we're suddenly getting to a point where... He, so he was ahead of his time in, in everything. I mean, you could, when I talk to people, they cannot imagine, because we filmed this series like a radio play. We did three episodes, uh, one Sunday a month. And it was a long time before we actually saw anything. And the first time I went into the studio and to see that everything was done on the size of a dining room table. Wow. I mean, you know, it's just all car chases and cars explain. It was all done on the dining, like the size of a dining room table. Yet on screen, it's huge. It just was, it was the most, it, no wonder it was called Super Mario Nation because it, it, that's exactly what it was. Oh. Matt Zimmerman, great to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this evening.